with it. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO. I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, outstanding Mr. Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not you know, my dad, we're all gone. But I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right at this moment and go follow us, like us, share us on all from all social media platforms. I mean, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. We on what you call it now? Threads. Yeah. I mean, page. Go to our Patreon channel because if y'all like these full length interviews and y'all want to see them before anything else, we drop everything first on Patreon. And on our YouTube membership package. So if y'all love our content and love what we're doing, go ahead and support the brand and sign up for our membership package. And y'all get to see everything before it even drops. Wow. Check it, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. We got a special treat for you guys today. Hey, you, listen, this guy don't need no introduction. If you've seen his hairstyle, because <laughs> this is how I first seen this guy, man. This guy, man, I seen him on the internet and it was like, dang, man, that's different. And it kind of, it made me see who he is, want to know who he is, man. I was like, man. And then I seen Richie Rich. NPR Richie Rich is in the building, man. What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on? We back at it, man. We I ain't in. seen you since I seen you on No Jumper. Yeah, yeah. It been a minute, man, and I'm working. I ain't going to stop. You know what's going on. You man, know the biggest is in the building, the GOAT. You know what's going on. It's all about figuring it out, right? Yeah. And we're going to figure it out. I want to talk to you about, you originally, you originally from uh, Florida? Nah, nah. Where are you originally from? from? Detroit. Detroit? Yeah. You from Detroit? Yeah, yeah. Man, get out of here, man. Yeah, you know what's going on. Bro, you from up there where they be, they be banging up there a lot, man. (laughs) I ain't going to lie. I got a big question for you because I'm glad to hear you might want to sit down for this one. Gotta ask him this question because it's a big, big thing on this show. Yeah. It's the Detroit dudes that try to say that they had the what? The diamonds in the glasses first. He one of them dudes. You see yeah. the glasses? Yeah. But others say it was Master, Master P, P had it that first. had it first. Nah. You in the record show. But they say, no, 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 no. Not just had it first. Who actually had it first for the world to see it? It was Master P on uh, that that's movie. The by, uh, because they by might. Or uh, 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 that. That's the difference. It was I mean, on the movie. That, that I can't. I can't go against that. I don't <laughs> know about that part. All I know is what I seen before I seen about it. About it, the movie. But you I saw seen it at them. home. You yeah, didn't see it big I, screen. But I'm seeing it on the streets. I'm seeing it like as an adolescent growing up. I'm seeing it in real time before I'm seeing the TV and knowing what the trends and everything coming from is the TV. So it could be. That's where they got it from because a lot of things do come from the music or from rappers or from the entertainment area. So that could have been, but I didn't know it for that. So if he did do that, then kudos to him. But he still ain't the first one that I see <laughs> with him on. You know what's going on. Man, you know, hey, man, I didn't, a couple of guys been in here. Uh, Street Lord Rook, a uh, couple of guys been on the show from uh, up there. They doing a lot of movies up there. I yeah. talk to those guys often. And uh, uh, my wife got in trouble with one of those dudes up there in a DM. It was a, a situation where she had did some things online. On the show. Who? And when she did it, <laughs> nigga, talking about nigga, me? nigga checked up from Detroit real smooth. Like, I had to get on there and tell the nigga, like, if you got an issue with something, then come over here and speak your piece. But, you know, he thought he was talking to me, but he was talking to her. Because yeah. she put the clips out on the Instagram, <laughs> not me. Yeah. But I had to jump in there when he did that. Uh, but clips that we were talking about that we recorded. Yeah, trick, trick. Trick, I trick. Know who you're trick, trick about. came out. Of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Trick, 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 trick gonna come out. It came for because she, uh, she said something <laughs> about. Uh, Rook was really the one it was about too because Street Law Rook said it was about checking in. He didn't agree with that checking in because if you can have people to check in, he said you're going to slow money up because you're going to go to their place. You want to check in when you go to their town? Right. So it was like, don't he didn't agree with that. He don't agree with the checking in thing. But he needs to go talk to Street Lord Rook, not to, to us. <laughs> We're not but we asked the question though, you know, but we didn't really ask the question like that. Why well, knowing me, I brought it up. Yeah, because yeah. about the checking in thing. Because checking in is a big, big, big deal. How do you feel about that? Like, I have a lot of guys from L.A. on the show. I got a lot of guys from different places come on the show. And uh, Richie Rich, they 
they tell me the checking in is the way. But then when you see certain people checking in, they checking out too, meaning they getting caught slipping and all kind of stuff at the check in. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about it? I think that how it was set up in the beginning or how it was set up for what it was set up for was to check in to make sure you got protection to make sure you're not in the wrong areas or make sure you're not doing the wrong things in that city. What they do on the opposite side of it, setting people up and all that, that's not what it was originated for. And I think they kind of took it to the wrong limits at the end of the day because it's just like anything. It's like, what was church made for? It was made for this. But then you got the people who going to be hypocrites and the people who going to do it. So everything has its both sides to the story situation. So I respect it only because even me, myself, when I'm going to certain cities, just like how I reached out to you, I'm checking in. That's checking in to me because I'm like, yo, let me reach out. Let them know that I'm in the city. Let them know that I'm outside so that they at least have an eyes and ears on the streets with me being in the city. Not necessarily saying that I'm in fear of my life or I'm fearing to go to these places. It's more about respecting people at the end of the day. When you in somebody's city that you're not from there and you got something going on it's like at least show respect by letting them know you in the city letting them know you moving around if there's anything that you should be into to get into if it's not don't get into nothing because just by checking in alone you might tell me hey don't go over to that area or don't go there might be an area i was planning to go to but you know the ups because this is your city yeah. so that's why it's important to check in but when they do the whole checking in when there's all the other stuff that gotta go exploitation th yeah that's not that's not what it was originated for so i mean i can't vouch for that but that's the same as Crips and Bloods and everything else. It wasn't meant to be this gang of terrorizing and all that. They changing it to that, and that's what people do when they add flavors to things. When it get when the story get told, then it's a whole different thing. But I think that's what it really started with. They just changed it up, and everybody got their own meaning and way how they do it. But honestly, me, I think that it's important because that's how you gonna know what's going on in the city. In the city. That's just I think that's I think. real too Because if you told me tonight Like E I'm going to take off And go over here I'm going to be like uh, Let me call this person To make sure right. When you get there They're going to show you love It's more like that Exactly And I think that's what It was meant for But you got people Who going to bully the situation Or do whatever You know And I mean I don't knock that side either If that's their way of life That's their way of living That's what they doing Let them do what they doing It's just if you know that's the type of time, then stay out their way. You know who to check in and who not to check in with. You you gonna learn that either one way or the other. So it's kind of hard to say what a person should do or feel that they should do. But if you checking in for the right reasons, do that. Man, I seen you. I think I seen you interacting with Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Soldier Boy is a guy that I you see him on the wall a few times yeah, with me. Yeah, for sure. And um, Soldier Boy. Uh, is a uh, dope man how did you end up even linking with him what is that all about yeah i ended up linking with soldier boy because i was doing some trolling stuff before right so when certain memes would come out i would reenact the memes you know social media wise and then um i went out to la a couple of times and we was tapping in but never really tapping in with him but the people who we was tapping in with was directly connected to him so then one day he was on live. I think that's when we first really tapped in. He was on live. I jumped on live saying what's up. He added me in. And from there, it's just been history. And I mean, you can see from the live, like how excited and how real it was. It was like, oh, this ain't just anybody. It's like, oh, you, you him. Like I've been hearing about you. So it was like things had been passed along, but it never was a connection made. And we actually made the first connection on live. Wow, do you? Th how hard is it, you know, coming from Detroit, moving to different cities, or just moving around in different cities, pushing your career the way you've had to do? Like, how hard is it being independent ground? Right? Yeah. Like, how how difficult is it in these days and times, or is it something that you maneuver w well doing? I think that for me is easy because I've been doing it so long. I see a lot of guys jump into it and want to be independent, and they don't want to do what I had to do. They don't want to do the homework. They don't do the, want to do the research. They don't want to learn the business. They don't want to know marketing. They don't want to know promote. They don't want to know nothing. They just want to be independent because in their mind, 
nobody's going to own me. Nobody's going to take nothing from me. But like anybody going to tell you in this world, zero of 100% of nothing is nothing. 50% of something is something. So they get it twisted with being independent and thinking that that's the only way and that's the only route because they looking at it from people like me who are successful independent. But look how many people we know that's not successful independent. Look how many people we know that's not successful with a label. It's not just one way or the other. I think they get it twisted with thinking that, oh, it's only this way and it's easy because they see people like me maneuvering and doing things that I do. But it may be the same person that may say, I don't want to check in, but you want to be independent, but you don't got no security. So it's it's all different things that's going to make you who you are and how successful you're going to be independent. A lot of the guys not even sociable. They don't even know how to talk. They don't know how to move, you know, and then it's, they don't know none of the business. So you could say you want to be independent all day and I can walk you a hundred miles and let you be independent, but you don't want to know not one part of the business, nothing. All you want to do is rap. All you want to do is be an artist. You're not going to make it far because you got to be able to make deals. You got to be able to make connections. You got to know how to actually get in the room with people. You got to know how to actually deal with people. If you don't know how to do those things, you're not going to get far independent, which it is an easy route, but it's also a hard route. I mean, you got to afford everything on your own. You got to travel on your own. You got to spend your own marketing money, spend your own promotional money. It takes a lot when it comes to your work ethic and you got to have a business that's going to keep revenue coming because if not, you're going to run out of money. The music game going to run you out of money a thousand times if you let it. But if you keep yourself consistent, keep yourself with a business, keep yourself with some income, then you can last a while. But that's how I look at it. So it's the business portion that is where you can make your money because we always hear, what you say, is a $1,000 for a million streams? Uh, $4,000 like? $4, for, for, for a million streams. streams and song. that's not like a lot of money. And if people only lived off of the streams, people would be broke. Yeah, because really? a lot of the guys ain't even getting a million streams. Exactly. You know what I'm so the people that I've heard that, you know, living pretty, is the people who invest their money, who um, do the merch, because one Facts. thing they talk about is that merch a lot. Cause even when you see these comedians at the shows and stuff, yes, they get booked for shows, but they're always at that door be selling that merch because that's exactly. where you make a lot of that money from. And they do different things. So you can't just only do just the music. Exactly. You have to be all around a business person. And that's what I love about where the industry is at right now, where... Um, back in the days, it was more about if you're an artist, all you had to do is concentrate on being a rapper or a singer. You have people around you to do with everything else, the business side. Exactly. But people don't understand that when you do that, you don't have the knowledge about if these people are ripping you off. <laughs> and it, since we've been doing this, we hear all the stories about people being ripped off in this industry because it's a shy industry. And you can't blame them. I blame the person that got ripped off because there's knowledge out there for you to know the game. Yeah. So you can't blame nobody else but you. Wow. No, for sure. And uh, that's going on every day. I want to hear about uh, how you, uh, you, in, you end up going to prison. Yeah. And you started rapping in prison. Yeah. How was that? Like, did did you what you fell out uh, fell out on, on on the day room? It was like just your boy NPR. <laughs> I'm gonna make it go far. No, nah, that ain't uh, how it went at gonna, all. Uh, you know how they do all this? Yeah, <laughs> nigga gonna try to grab yeah, a beat. The room nigga gonna try it. to grab a beat for so worried is over. Uh, yeah, you on the wall. Yeah, yeah, all the time yeah but like like how long was you in there? And how did you start? Um, I had got sentenced to three years and probably about a year in when I started really federal? rapping. Yeah, federal. Yeah, I was at How long ago was this? This was 2010 that I got locked up. 2011, right at the beginning. So that's of before kids? No, I had my first two. Um, okay. Like, I had my first daughter. Mm -hmm. She was five months Mm. And my second daughter was born while I was actually in there. Mm. So she was pregnant with her when I got locked up. Oh, she must have been mad at you. Oh, man. That's a long story. She must have been mad that's at you. That's a long story. So that's how that happened. And, uh, but, yeah, how I started in there, uh, I had got in trouble. So I had went to the hole. So while I'm in the hole, 
one yeah. of my cellies down the, you know what I'm saying? You don't got nothing in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so say, you about to you down figure there something say, out. You ain't say it. It's Come dark. On, yeah, you you down there by yourself. You in the room by yourself. You got to think to do something. You know what I'm saying? So something coming on your mind. So me and him used to just go back and forth freestyling. And he was cold. My man's was cold. Like, he sounded like an Eminem. Mm. And if I pull him up right now, he sounds like Eminem. Like, this is how he was rapping. Where is he from? Detroit? Nah, he's actually Eight from... Mile? uh <laughs> No, I think he from like Wisconsin or something. He black, white. He white. He, he white. white. He white. Okay. No, so he yeah, really like he definitely he sound like Eminem. Him and them vibe, bro. It was crazy. But, you call it nigga? But this was so crazy. I'm Rapping not fast even, and everything. I'm not even knowing because he talked it like he was black. We mm. can't even see each other. So when so I you see didn't him, know. I'm like every time he would rap, and you know what I'm saying. I'm like he sound like him. And I never seen him, but, but if you hear him talking, he sounded like he was black. So I was like, assuming he was black, I'm like, okay, he's just different. And when I seen him, then that's when I realized what was going on. But mm. long story short, we freestyling. And I used to just freestyle all the time because I couldn't write. I didn't know how to read the writing, the, what I was writing back because I couldn't really read at this time. Okay. So when I'm freestyling he like man you wrote that down i'm like nah i just used to tell him nah because he don't know my situation so i'm like nah he like man you should start writing stuff down i'm like nah man i'm straight i'm gonna just keep freestyling you know what i'm saying because i know what's going on with me i can't write i can't read but i can't read so if i write it but hold I gotta, on. how can you write but can't read that don't make no sense because i can i don't know Reading is different. It's a different fundamental. I don't know how to explain it, but when you're trying to read, you can read but can't really read. Like when I was trying to read my raps, it's a stutter way more than it is a fluent rapper. You know, a fluent reader can read the mm -hmm. lines across right. over and over. But when you're trying to rap, now you're trying to rhyme and mm -hmm. read, and you already can't just. I never read books. Mm -hmm. So this it's a whole so story. So stuttery though. wouldn't go yeah, through, but you could write. But I could write. But you could read in your mind, but exactly. it just couldn't come out properly. I, could, it, I don't even know if I could really read in my mind. It just was I could talk. If I you see could how talk, what happened to R. You Kelly? Can't I read. couldn't really understand till now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but this is why it's funny because it's like when you think about Floyd, how did Floyd get to where he could do Ooh, that? Oh, don't do that. But he could. Don't, don't he do couldn't that. read. Don't do that. That's my guy right there. But he couldn't read. No, he can read. <laughs> he just don't read like everybody else. And that's how I was. So <laughs> me and him got something <laughs> oh, damn. I could read. I just couldn't. I was read reading like at a fifth grade else. level. Yeah. I'm reading at a fifth grade level, but I'm an adult. So that's I could read, but not read. And you can you know write perfectly well. And I could write perfectly well, but that's why it's deep because I actually wrote three books, and I'm wow. actually about to drop one of the books. In like a couple of days, like it's it's, I just uploaded it, self published it, and everything. Like it's literally coming out in a couple of days. I'm gonna actually drop it for on my birthday, but it's gonna be pre order on Monday. When's your birthday? September 17th. Oh, okay. So it gets deep. Like I that that was the situation though. I couldn't I couldn't really read. So when it was time to write something down, I'm like I ain't, I can't even write this. And he like, bro, just write it down. And I'm like. He don't even know. I can't even read. So eventually I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to start writing this down. So I start writing. To this day, I got eight notepads of rhymes. But when I came home, it was still like I'm not really that good of a reader. So I was like, I didn't even use none of that. So I got in the studio and started doing a whole different thing. So I got all of these books that I wrote of rhymes. So I'm eventually going to drop that as like my rhymes because I'm... I, just the way I'm fluent with speaking, you would be like, "Ain't no way he can't right, read." Right, that's why I, it's I can't weird. grasp like, it. It's a, it's a weird dysfunction. You know what I'm saying? You but have a name for that dysfunction? I don't know. I never looked into it. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't something that I needed to look into, or I felt that I need to look into. At right. this point now, I can read a lot better than I was reading. Right, right. But right. it's just not a fluent reading where I'm not gonna stutter or miss or have to go back and reread it and mm -hmm. all that. It's 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 a whole nother. It's an ability that I didn't really use, so I didn't feel like I needed it. But exactly. you need it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's one of the fundamentals you need. But look at how successful you can be without having that part of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's a weird situation, but it's real. And that's why 
in this book and the other books that I'm planning on putting out is like just showing kids like this is an opportunity that is given to us now. There was people who couldn't read because they weren't given the opportunity to read. And somebody like me took that as for granted because I had all the opportunity to read because I went through school and I graduated and everything. So how could I not read? Exactly. And that's what's crazy. Like I graduated. Oh, you had everybody high doing your homework for you. You had yeah. everybody doing all your stuff for you. That's what for it real. was. That's what it was. And yes. if you that type of a person, you're gonna get the things to get done. Yeah. Do you play sports you in school? Done. High school? I didn't play sports. I was about to say the coaches pushed you through how all of you, that stuff. I wouldn't you? have got to play sports because of my academics. Like I graduated with a D average. I graduated with a one point eight GPA. You can graduate with that? I'm I'm living proof. Well, how did you go to the military? I paid how did you a couple pass, people. How did you pass that damn test going to the military, man? Cheating. <laughs> what you mean? This <laughs> nigga done cheated to get in the military? Come on, now. Hey. How did you cheat? Tell the truth. It's out, it's over now. It's yeah. a test. The same way you cheat on any test. So you just somebody taking answer? the test with you. Mm. You had somebody take it with you? Yeah. And pay them some money. I was physically in shape, but I wasn't mentally in shape. But I could get the job done. That's hard. But so in it's cases like, like you, like if somebody came to you with a contract to sign a music contract. Oh, yeah, I could read it because I could take my time. But it's like the reading on a fluent level oh, okay. of being like, Got it. I ain't going to read this contract in 10 seconds like you going to read it. I'm going to read it in an hour. Mm -hmm. So I I can spell. I can read. I can do those things. It's I just, just fluently. Yeah, just not fluently. So got that's it. how they judge you with the fluency. Mm -hmm. So when you take, you got to think when you take tests, it's a time test. So you got to get it done within this amount of time. And that's the only reason why you got a D. It's not that you didn't know the work. Exactly. It's just that you're not finishing on time. Right. Because it wasn't that I couldn't talk or I don't know mm -hmm. words. It's just on a timely. It's got just it. like typing. If mm -hmm. I take you to a typewriting class, you're not gonna type just as fast it. as somebody who's on the computer. All, but you can pass, mm -hmm. but you ain't gonna you ain't getting an A because you ain't typing like this. Right, you're typing right. like this. What did you end up going to? Uh, you ended up going to the military. Yeah, but you end up going to prison in the military. In the military, what yeah. did you do? Selling drugs. You were. Dope boy in the military. And that frequently <laughs> happens? Where was you at? Uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They know you up there. Yeah, you was in the yeah. Navy? I was in the Army. Oh, he an Army guy. Yeah. God, dog. Yeah. They usually buy systems in there. and I guess they <laughs> own that. Why they own something in there. Nah, I mean, this is what it is. Like, a lot of people don't even understand how much drugs affect the world versus it is just a community of people, right? So, when you got people like army people or veterans these people go through more stuff than a regular person right so you gotta imagine if you got regular people using drugs to escape what is these people use to escape but they want to sweep all that under the rug you know they you're not going to hear about that because that goes against our country that goes against what we stand for that goes against what we are known for so it's very swept under the rug you don't hear the suicidal rate you don't hear the death rate even when we just watched the whole 9-11 that's when i was fighting during that time you didn't hear all of the deaths you know what i'm saying you didn't hear all of the situation they swept a lot of people under the rug that never came home but you didn't get to hear about that because that ain't publicized the way that they put certain numbers out there they're gonna say this amount of people but Everybody know they ain't count every single body. They didn't do every single thing. They ain't tell you all the money they was taking from them people on um, why this war was really going. It's a lot of stuff that is swept under the rug because you're dealing with the government. So they're not going to put that type of stuff out there. I mean, you you down there selling dope, man. <laughs> You, I don't, let me tell you something, nah, bro. You, it wasn't you in the even, military, But it man. wasn't even really like that. Y'all wearing them damn uniforms. You got PTSD. You been to the war. You really should be okay because you got an excuse. Yeah, but see, that's did the they, whole thing. Did they forgive you? Nah, they, they never should've? forgave me. Because you got to think about it. You went to the war. Nah, but this is the thing. You see what I'm saying? This that, what I'm they saying. wrong for that. This is where they... Am I right? Mm -hmm. This is where they make uh, examples out of people. No, you know? you're a victim. And it's even deeper than that, right? Because the reason why I even was getting the opiates that I was selling was because they was giving them to me because I got hurt. See what I'm saying? So You're a I victim. got hurt. And at first, I'm giving them away. 
when I run out, they still need it. I'm not realizing they addicted at the time the way they was addicted because I don't come from an opiate drug background. So and it's like you can make some money off of this. When when it get to the point where it's like we need this, you need to go find this for us because you're the source. I'm like, okay, let me find out where it's at. I'm a hustler. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Not because I was trying to deliberately sell the drugs. It had nothing to do with that. I was giving them away at first because I didn't even know how addicted these people was because I didn't know what the opiates was doing. And then I started learning after the fact. I'm locked up by this time and I'm really understanding like, oh, these people was really addicted. These people was coming to me every day. Hey, I need this. I need this. I need So you that. never took it at all? No. I took it maybe a couple of times and I was like I don't like the way this feels makes you feel because it doesn't you, you're you loopy mm -hmm. I'm somebody who and they like be to on feel the move loopy. you feel me they want to be loopy mm -hmm. they loving it I'm like nah this ain't me but these people is functional like they're functional with this stuff so they're taking it all day long every day to the point that they can't go without it when they go without it they sick they having withdrawals they going through it I'm mm -hmm. not even understanding what they're going through because I never dealt with hard drugs like that. So they was doing something completely different than what I was even paying attention to. I'm just making sure that they get it because they come to me like, yo, I need it. So it turned into a business based off of them wanting it and me being able to get it. But it started from me just giving it away. I'm like, bro, I don't even want this. They like, yo. And I didn't peak game on why they want it. I'm like, yo, I don't need this. I ain't about to be using this. Y'all can take this. Have that. So, and that started a whole operation. And when you when you think about it, though, you went through it, man, because that's, you really, like I said again, you, you was a victim, man. They know that. But, but you wasn't they able, made you, an was you able to fight it? Or you still I'm couldn't? I'm still to this yeah, day fighting like you it. You should yeah. be. This is 10 years later. I got a sergeant major on my case right now you trying should, to fight it. They denied me twice wow. for my appeal. Like, they denied me twice. And then they wouldn't even, they deny all of my, like, for parole and everything. They wouldn't let me get out early. I'm watching people who did horrendous crimes get out early. You feel me? It was all about what they wanted the narrative to be and what they wanted the example to be. You feel me? And that's what they painted the picture of. Oh, this kid from Detroit did it like this. He's living like this. He's moving like that. That was all a game for what they wanted. You feel me? Versus if it was really who I was or what I was doing. You, after you go, go through all that you're going through and dealing with everything that you had to deal with, you, you, you end up, they kick you out. They kick you out of the army. Yeah, after no you, benefits, no nothing. They just put you, lock you up and then kick you out. And put you out. And, and the whole time you in there, they telling you, like, you ain't going to never be nothing. You not going to never get a job. You not going to never have a career. You not going to be able to do nothing. We basically blackballing you from everything you could potentially ever do. You know what I'm saying? They putting you in that mindset because they want you to fail when they don't like what, what's going on. You feel me? But me being me. You know, I'm a strong individual. I'm thinking outside of the box. I'm going to make something shake because I'm a hustler at the end of the day. I'm going to grind. I'm going to get it. I'm not lazy. I'm a provider. You can't stop that from me. So I'm going to go make sure I do what I need to do to make things happen for me and my family for sure. Man, that's that's heavy, man. So you you basically, this the song I heard was finally made it. Yeah. And that, that, that song there. That yeah. was one of your biggest songs, wasn't it? Yeah. It definitely. is the biggest song. Yeah, it is the biggest song. And what made what inspired you to do that song? <clears throat> what inspired that song was coming out of COVID. So we in COVID and this time everybody's away from each other. Everybody's on lockdown. I'm calling my grandparents. I'm calling my dad, my mom. I'm calling everybody. Everybody's scared. They don't want you to round them. They don't want you to, you know, they had us really in fear for being around each other like it was deeper than you can't be around your family they like you can't be around nobody so they shutting off flights they shutting off they shut the whole world down literally you know and it was like during that time everybody was going through something different you know what i'm saying that brought out a whole different beast to me because i was just off of a tour so i'm moving around just having my free world doing everything i can do and then i'm locked down 
So when I get locked down, it put me in a certain mindset. It's like, dang, you know what I'm saying? You stuck. So that's where certain music came out during that time. But as soon as COVID lock, unlocked and it was like, okay, we back outside, we can back move around. That's where the granny, we made it. Cause it's basically letting everybody know like we really made it, but not only just through music, through life, through everything. This is a celebration of life. That's the mode I wanted to put people in because if you listen to all my other music, it's not that type of a vibe. It's different. So when you were when you did that song, were you signed to someone? No. So he's I, I, I'm still not signed. How did it do? How uh, when it come to did how many? How, what did you sell? It's over a billion streams on that record wow. right now over all the platforms. Wow, on the independent grind. Independent. Oh, it went so crazy off of TikTok and and Instagram alone. Like the marketing plan that I came with during COVID, it just shut the whole system down because if you if you really think about it and really remember what was going on during that time, it was dancing. So everybody was trying to catch a dance record. Living a moment ain't no dance record. So I had to play living a moment through all the memes. So everybody thought that that crate challenge was the theme song was my song. They didn't know me behind it. They just knew the song. So when it went crazy on TikTok, it went crazy on Instagram. Then I started sending it through all the other memes. Every meme that would even take a hit starting to go viral. I'm grabbing it, putting that song on it, re-putting it out there. So all of the songs during that time, and it's been two years that I've been pushing the same song. Almost every viral meme had that song on it. Wow. At one point or another to Smart. the point yeah. that World Star, Snoop Dogg, Say Chi, every every major platform that I didn't hit up, yo, I'm trying to work with y'all, ain't <laughs> responding, ain't saying nothing. They all then posted it on somebody else's stuff with my song on it because what they do is they post everybody's stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't just post one particular thing. What I was doing was hitting everybody with the same exact song, every video. So you not knowing if this is a marketing campaign coming from a mean campaign or coming from a big page, but it just started going viral. Once the people start coming in, it's just going viral every time. So that's how I got literally, you can look this up, one of the top five songs or play videos on Instagram and it's on Snoop Dogg's page with like 43 million streams on that one song. Like that's what really happened in real life. Like because I had everybody reposting everything that I was doing. They didn't even know it was me. And that was the whole key. I never put no face or no tag or no brand behind it because I was like, I want it to be a secret. I want it to just go. Once it go, then I can let them know, hey, this is me. But before they knew it, it was too late. It was like mm, everybody it. planning. I'm talking about I was just pulling up places. When people pull up their phone, all you hear is, Granny, we made it. But can a song get too played out? No. No. You want to know I, why? Why? Because it's 8 billion people in the world, right? And if you got 8 billion people, how many millions and billions of people has never heard of it? Then you got on top of that, how many people going to listen to it and not really understand why they listening to it the same way a radio programmer does the radio. You hear Beyonce or you hear Nicki Minaj or you hear Drake or you hear 2 Chains or Rick Ross or whoever your favorite is. You hear them every time over and over and over because they got so many spins But per you got to think about <clears throat> the people who don't know nothing about the music industry are the people who are listening to your music, right? Right. So, like, I asked my daughter the other day about a certain song. I said, do you like this song? She's like, I can't stand that song. I said, why? It's a good song. She's like, because they push it so much. Every time you, hit, you turn your phone on, you hear it on TikTok. You hear it on Instagram. You hear it on. She's like, it is so played out. I hate it right now. So that's the reason why I asked that question. But I think that's why it's super important to understand the marketing and promotion side of it because it got promoted and marketed her so much that she hated, it, but she loved it because she's going to play it when it come on. Regardless no, she ain't going to play it. it. When she on TikTok, it comes on. That's what I'm saying. She, I'm saying she's going to play it regardless of if she wants to play it or not. That's why I was going with it. It's not a if you like this or not. If you turn on the radio and Nicki Minaj come on and that's not somebody you like, you don't have no choice but to either A, turn it off or put your own stuff on. Mm -hmm. And that's a certain small category of people who going to say, I'm not just going to listen to the radio because they playing Nicki Minaj. They're not going to do that usually. They're going to let that, they're going to tune their ear off 
and they're going to ride or whatever they doing during that time, and then it's going back on. But you can't stop the clubs. You can't stop the DJs. You can't stop the radio. You can't stop everybody. But in today's generation, though, with the kids, they don't listen to radio. They go on Spotify on their playlist or whatever. Right. So if they don't like that song, it won't be added to their playlist. Correct. But that's individuals. You got major corporations that's pushing them playlists that's nowhere near what your child or what my kids is going to listen to. That's them streams that I'm going to get from them is so much smaller than the streams that I'm going to get from a major platform. Who plays that they're going to push it just because it's a popular song. Mm -hmm. They going off of what's trending. That Living a Moment song was trending on Instagram, trending on TikTok. That's a whole different category if some individual don't like it. And that's it. what I was going for, numbers. Not if you like me or she like me. It was numbers. Just give me pure numbers. Play it till you can't play it no more. And there <laughs> isn't nothing you can't play it no more because that's what I was just telling my wife. I'm like, yo, it's so much content being produced on a day-to-day -day basis. You could never run out of content. You could never run out of memes. You could never run. There is no running out. I see the most craziest stuff. My page went from like 10 or 12 people sending me stuff to hundreds. I'm talking about, D I can't even open my DMs. It's hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people sending me memes because I became the World Star page. Now I understood what World Star, how they're getting their content and how Snoop Dogg's getting his content. They're not going to look for this. You don't need no A&R. Just people like the rap, don't need no A&R. People sending it to you because you've become their meme page so they literally thought my page was a meme page because they started sending me every meme because i was posting five to 20 times a day you couldn't you i'm telling you it was at one point you couldn't even get on instagram without hearing this song i'm gonna tell you how really deep it got because instagram dm me and shut my page down really i have the proof they dm me shut my page down i'm like why did they shut my page down what's going on they sent me a message on the email saying, hey, we shut your page down because even if this is real, you're overusing our system. Mm. This is during the time they paying you for reals. Mm. So now I'm doubling down. You talking about getting paid? Oh, man. What's I the largest went from, check? Like 50. From, from Instagram? From Instagram. No wow. cap. Wow. Damn, I ain't never know you could get no 50 from That's what I'm saying. Didn't nobody reels. know it. One month. That's why they, that's, this is why, yeah, this is why they stopped doing yeah. pay reels. Because people like me <laughs> figured out the system. I'm posting so many reels. It's, it's, it's based off of your content, how mm -hmm. many times you can post. But the average content creator, they trying to do one a day, one how a week. You, doing? you know what I'm saying? I'm doing, do he said I'm doing like, 20 a day or more all day long i'm pushing they literally i can show you the message they said hey even if you are a real person this is breaking the system basically this is beyond the system you gotta send us that message like this is real the real deal i'm gonna send you this message like they didn't now this is my page been shut down four times for no reason i got the recordings and everything I literally get them on the phone now. This is personal DM contact. Like, you talk to them now because it's a bigger issue than what everybody else is dealing with. We know a bunch of people that lost their pages. They can't get them back. But they literally have to talk to me. And every message that they send me back, all of them say, sorry for the inconvenience. It was our apologies. We thought you were going against the rule. But I get it. I know why y'all shutting my page mm -hmm. down. It's already they there. Can't pay, they don't want to pay you. That's why they did it. They stopped. They took my blue check. They took my pay. They took my page. Them three things. It was one after another. And then from there, it's like I, the last conversation I just had with them. I'm like, so all these violations that y'all have me for and all this stuff. So now y'all have the ability to just take my page at any given moment. And they're like, yeah, if anything comes up that says it's flagged, we'll just shut your page down. And it's like they just doing it now to stop my algorithm. When I got my page back originally, the first time, it said I was touching 700, no, 2,772,000 accounts. That's how many people that I touched with just my account, with only 4 million followers on it. But you talking about 272 million people mm. I didn't touch, they didn't all reach my account. So that tells you the numbers that's just crazy because of what I did. It, it was a loophole in the system that they wasn't ready for.
-hmm. Now that they're ready for it, they got to figure out a whole new thing. So they like, okay, we put all this money out through these reels. Now let's come back and take the money from the people who selling blue checks and all this other stuff. And now we gonna put out the blue checks, fourteen ninety nine a month. Then they didn't made seven seventy two million dollars or some crazy in one day. But it's all because of this money. They understand how to get the money, and that's all that this is all about. They got tired of dishing out the money because you got a lot of influencers from the country, Wayne's, and everybody like that. Man, they was making real money. Mm -hmm. Like, and they'll all tell you, this is not something you hide. We got the checks. We got the results. Like, we know what's going on. But you're talking about somebody who is creating raw talent and really working for this versus me, where I'm just reposting for this. <laughs> this is two different things. This dude probably spent thousands of dollars Yours to make content. was way easier. Mine's was so much easier. It was a loophole they wasn't ready for. Plus, I was getting streams. Because I'm signed up with BMI. I'm signed you up. you posting the whole thing. you reposting the same thing on, 20 man. times a day? Over and over and with over. Different images, different content. Different memes. But same song. Mm -hmm. That's why the song became so popular. But different memes. Everybody posts memes all day long. I can tell you a thousand influencers myself. But I was taking their content and putting my song underneath it. Because it was already going viral. So when it's already going viral, it's in the algorithm. So that type of content going to go viral again. So I would post it. Some people, my most famous one was uh, Spice. You know, the Jamaican. Her video is what, that was the biggest one. It was mm. 43 million on Snoop Dogg's page. She posted a video of them, you know, when they do the dancing. Mm -hmm. It was the crazy dancing. I reposted it with my music on it. Everybody thought it was mine. She reached out to me like, you put your song on my thank you. Because it made her so much famous too because she's already lit. But all of these people seeing her content, I'm talking about Snoop on Snoop's page alone. If Snoop shows us his analytics, he probably got millions of reposts. So many people reposted it from his page alone because it was so crazy to see what was going on. But the whole time it was my song playing, but her movements. Wow, what's the new? What What are you doing now? Because they tore your ass up. They took, they took <laughs> yeah, they took that money away from that 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 little post situation with Instagram. So how are you? How are you maneuvering in the social media world today? I'm still. Posting, I just post a lot less. Yeah, I don't but you're do, not even getting paid I, for it. Yeah, yeah. I don't even do it for the same reason no more. Like, I slowed down as far as with promoting that particular song. No, what are we doing now, though, to, to, to build up the algorithm? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm about to go into. What I'm doing now is I created another page, and now I'm working that page. But I'm also about to drop another mixtape. So it's new music on the way. I got a book on the way. I got a documentary on the way. So I'm gearing everybody up for the new movement of the other things I do outside of music, mm -hmm. but it's still entangled with music because even before all that, I was in the real estate. I'm in the crypto. I'm in the stock market. What I'm about doing Facebook? Stuff. Are you you're not tapping into Facebook? It's all connected. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, they when they shut that down, they shut everything down. They shut your Facebook yeah, down too? Yeah, everything is all in one. What about YouTube? YouTube's still going. YouTube's still doing it. I just haven't put nothing because I wasn't shooting videos. It was all about the memes. So now I got a whole new set of videos and everything. Even all the videos that I shot since I've dropped Living the Moment, I just put them on Instagram because it made more money on Instagram than it was going to make on YouTube. Yeah, I was in the system. I seen what was going on. So I'm like, I got more engagement on Instagram than I got on YouTube. So that was making me post on Instagram everything so now I'm about to take them same videos drop them on YouTube drop them on Spotify drop them everywhere and now bring that part of the game back up but my main focus at that time was creating a narrative people now thought your people page was me. fake because of how, how they was doing all that yeah everybody I ain't gonna lie. I, when you came over and told me the last time and you talked they took your blue check I said that nigga lying Ain't nobody taking nobody blue check. That nigga lied. That nigga done took the blue check. I said, shoot, they blue. They, he, they took the blue check because he bought that hoe. You know what I'm saying? And he stopped paying on it. Then, then, Look, I, then I, no, no, real. he wasn't even paying for it. Then I said, he done bought it from one of them fake niggas. Yeah, this was before the I had a blue check two, I, three years. I seen that. Yeah. And I was like, damn, they took his blue check. Oh, I knew that nigga page was fake. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this way, I'm just giving nah, you the for real. I, I respect I that because I knew a lot of people fate. thought that. Like, I knew the nigga got too many followers for me. What the hell? Yeah. But it's because you figured it out. Exactly. But this At least is, I'm honest enough to tell you what I was nah, thinking. and that's real right? because <laughs> so many people ain't going to say right. it. But <laughs> even the, the whole meme that, like, this is another uh, key moment. The meme where the blue checks about the blue checks going fake when they said that on the podcast in new york i'm the one who made that go viral i'm right. the one that was posting that and it went viral i talk to them all the time esco and all them they they all know that went viral on my page and that had everybody tripping because they like this nigga the one who said something about everybody having the fake blue checks and talking about the fake blue checks and then this nigga blue check come up missing so it was like what is going on but it was all a movement from what so they knew. So did they tell you you can't buy another blue check? No, they. that's what they've been telling me the whole they time. They want him to buy the blue they check. They want me to buy it because they want some of their money Why back. Yeah, that's what they want. They want me to pay for the blue check. Like, I've been talking back and forth with them like, yo. They want you to pay for it? Yeah, man. But you don't need to pay for it. You had it. I don't need it. That's why I don't got it. I don't like, need it. I'm like... Y'all want me to pay for something, which I don't even mind, but I mind because I had it already and y'all right. took it because y'all didn't like what I was doing. And that's not a reason. But then even if you stuff. start paying for it and then they, they shut my page it, down. Right. Then they can take it again, yeah. although you paid for it. No, they say guarantee they won't shut your page down if you buy a blue check. No, that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. They shutting your page down if they want to shut your page down. Yeah, That's they how control it is, bro. stuff. Like, they control it, but it's they got to keep figuring new things out because that's why the algorithms and everything keep changing. That's why they just came with threads because they seeing what's going on. They seeing what is changing, what the world looking for. They on top of it. But I got a question, though, because with um – how hot that song was and so forth and how long you've been pushing it for how stressed were you about coming out because with another song to try to beat that song no see i got this different type of syndrome right i don't even want what everybody else is wanting the hit after hit after hit after right. hit. i do music because i love it before that song like that year before that song came out Music was stressful to me because I'm trying to find that one. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get that one. I'm trying to get something to be notable for, even though the fame wasn't necessarily what I was looking for at the most peak. It was more about the money. So when I caught that one, it was like, that's what really showed me everything that everybody was talking about because I'm a big person on interviews and watching documentaries and understanding what's going on. So. When I can tell you Michael Jackson only wanted to recreate Thriller, MC Hammer only wanted to recreate his major hit, like all of these key people. Can't Prince, touch this. All of, it wasn't even can't touch this. That wasn't even his biggest song. Which one was the biggest song? It was the one Three, before five, that. Three five seven. Uh, 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 that's on the tip of my tongue. But I it was the it was one before this. this. Nah, it was the one before that. Isn't that the one he did that dance to? Yeah, it was the one right before that because. What happened was with that song in particular, they spent their bag on Can't Touch This. But the one right before that is when they got the bag. So they tried to recreate the one right before that, but they made so much notoriety and cap off of the Can't Touch This that that one became the bigger song. But they put so much money into it. They went broke really trying to do that. But that's what happened. They were trying to recreate that one that made him go up there and it, it that's what really keeps happening to all the artists they're trying to recreate that same narrative from what got them on and you, it's like getting your first high you don't get that you same get high back. again let me let me get you on this music man let's get to it man i want you to drop something for me man give me something man i'm gonna drop a beat and i want you to give get, you know go in a little bit for your boy all right let's get to it man let me let me get squared away here let's do uh, that uh 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 uh, uh this will be it let's go Okay, let me turn it up. Check it, man. Boss Talk 101. Yeah. Hey, we know Pop Bar. You know what's going on. I'm trying to see if 
they really ready for this. Oh well, yeah. Hey, how we gonna get at them? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Nigga, this my shit. <laughs> Welcome to City of Cars. Play with the rule of Detroit. Now I'm the nigga in charge. Most of the real niggas gonna applaud. The most of these niggas is a bunch of frauds. I'm the only one that took that charge. Now I'm the youngest nigga in charge. This is a stick up. Huh. Got the whole industry at large. I'm the nigga with the boss. I'm the nigga with the cars. Who really love me before I was star? Who really love me before I was boss? Who really love me before I was cars? Who really love me before I was star? Detroit City, please go easy on me tonight. Hey. Detroit City, please go easy on this part of mine Cause I'm losing my city to the hearts of another Detroit City, please go easy on me tonight Man, check yeah. it man, man, that is yeah. up So Detroit City, man it, Come on you, now You love to put that city out there man yeah, man, I'm from there, you know. You gotta and let I, them have it. I took my talents to another city, but at the end of the day, I had to I do what you I was had out to of do. You were down there so much. Nah, no, man, no, I'm really <laughs> from the city. I'm like, where's this man from? For real. But this is like the, the, the hairstyle, man. Like, oh, I know people automatically know you from the hairstyle. Yeah. Like, it ain't got longer since I seen you. Like, yeah. Like, nigga, it's what is you gonna do, long. man? Man, I'm curling it, wrapping it around. I done had to tie it up. You gonna make it in a little. Circle? It's going to be like a full-blown Billy goat. You know what I'm saying? The baby goat starting. The, you, you got the jury, you know baby. Saying? I see the jury with on, the goat. Come on, man. I done had to go all the way uh, in. And these know. these really sponsorship. Like, really? I'm really tied in with these companies right now. Like, And this with people not even knowing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on another level. I, I got thought that was them $50,000 checks coming in. Kept man, coming man. in. How long did they come in over there at IG? Man, I ain't going <laughs> to disclose all that, but you know what's going on. <laughs> man. Look, man, and that's what's so crazy about this. Like, I really got partnerships with major brands and really got real motion off of this. You know what I'm saying? That's why people don't really understand what it was really about. Like, I've learned the game in a whole nother demeanor because... They got me independent on another level. Like, this is what real independence is. You yeah. got real deals, endorsements, and sponsorships, and partnerships with major companies that they doing stuff that nobody else going to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't need somebody to put a bag behind me because I got real relationships that's got the bag. Man, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of you? Oh, baby, you got... <laughs> <laughs> the only way in every way to get a hold of me, man, you can find me on any platform at NPR underscore Richie underscore Rich, and that's R-I-C-H-E underscore Rich, R-I-C-H. And if it's not on certain platforms, you don't need the underscore, so it's just NPR Richie and Rich. And that's on all the platforms. And if you can't find me there for some odd reason, if you go upstairs in your attic at your grandma's house and check, or if you go in the basement at your mama's house and check, I'm somewhere down there or I'm outside on the corner with your pops or I'm inside with your uncle. Like, I'm somewhere. I'm everywhere. There's nowhere that I'm not. And I'm going to stand on that. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, bro, as usual, man. I, I knew we were going to link up. Man, I, I, it was only right. Man. It's going down, man. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, man. And we Let's out. do it. <laughs>